Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be learning about random numbers and static variables so we're going to be digressing from object oriented programming for just a moment and this will be a short video so don't worry uh, so this would, this would be a quick little thing so the first thing that you'll need to do in order to produce random numbers so we'll do that one first because that's the lesser the important things uh, static variables are much more important but we're going to want to import the C time class because we're going to use that in order to produce a random seed for us. And in order to produce a random number, first type out srand followed by your parentheses. Then inside this will go the seed. Now we could always put one in ourselves, but why do that when we can make it random using the time class? So we can just put in one of the functions from the time class in here. So uh, we can just type out time and then inside there put zero. So that will be our random seed in this guy. So that's cool. Then to actually print it out, I'll just type out C out. Then I'll, well, how do we actually produce the number? Well, in order to produce it, just type out rand with the empty parameters as such. And this will actually produce pretty much any random number. Massive. So uh, in order to create boundaries, because you're probably going to want to create boundaries for it, you know, from x from one number to another number. You can put a little mod sign in front of it and let's put 5. So here uh, this will actually produce well I'll show you. Let's let's see what's produced. So if I run this with control F5, let's see what happens here. Oh uh, we got 0. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, but anyways right here it says right here conversion from time t to unsigned int uh, possible loss of data don't worry, that's why we're going to set it to a variable later. Doing it like this could be a bit dangerous, so we typically won't do it this way. But did you see that there's a zero there? Let me run this again and see what happens. Now we got a four. But anyways, as I was saying, um, zero, is that necessarily going to be part of the random search that you want? Do you want zero to be possible? Uh, well, here, when you use the mod here, what's happening is, basically, I'll just keep it simple this this number where wherever you put right there will allow the random to return any number from zero up to a one less than this number so if I threw a plus one in here now instead of going from zero to four it'll go from one to five so this will actually fix everything for us but I actually don't want to do it that way instead I would actually like to um, create a I don't know, create a, uh, a variable this way. So unsigned int output will be equal to, then I'll create our rand right here, then I'll mod it to, should we check all the way to 100? I think we should check all the way to 100, so there we go. So if I just did this, if I just, whoops, if I just did this uh, without the 1, this will check from 0 to 99, but throwing this in, it'll check from 1 to 100, which is probably what, what we'll want then I'll create a loop. How about that? So I'll create a for loop and I'll have an int i is equal to zero while i is less than I don't know 25 i plus plus let's print out let's print out uh, output right here so and and line uh, you know what? I'm starting to think that, that this isn't going to work. This is actually going to print the same number again and again. So that's actually not too good. But, hmm. Uh, I'll do this. How about this? I'll copy this. And I'll throw it right down here. There we go. Now I'll change output every single time. And now it'll be a different number. Uh, that's what we'll want. So let's uh, go Control F5 here. Ooh. Got a whole bunch of numbers here. So as you can see, we uh, our boundaries are from, in fact, 1 to 100. Uh, no 100s there, but there's no 1s there either. So I could probably could probably change this, so uh, give it a higher percent rate. Instead of doing an end line, I could always just throw out an empty string too. So you know what? Let's go up to 175. Let's print a whole bunch of these. Let's see. Oh, there it is. There's a 100 right there. And let's try looking for a 1. Let's see if we have a 1 in here somewhere. Um, oh, by the way, that's not a 0 right there. That's actually a 20. See, there's a 2 right there and there's a 0 there. So that actually kind of scared me. I thought a 0 actually appeared. 
No, there shouldn't be any zeros, but... Oh, I don't see any ones. Oh, dear. Well, and that, you know, that's a 40, see? But, uh... Okay, no ones, but it does go up to 100, as you can see, so it is successful. Uh, no zeros, as you saw. But, of course, there's no ones either, but... Anyways, that's pretty much how you can go about creating a random number. Typically, it will set it equal to a variable. And maybe for games, for an example, I did this in my C Sharp and Visual Basic playlist. I'm not going to really do it here because we're not working with Windows Forms, so it's kind of more difficult for me to show you. But typically, you'll do something like this. You'll create an if statement, and now that we know that random, the, the output can only be a number between, uh, or from 1 to 100, you could do if outputs is, you know, like, greater than or equal to 40 and or uh, output is less than or equal to whoops, 60 you could do something like that you know and of course more parentheses out here and you know if certain conditions are true uh, have a certain output you know so that's pretty much how you would work with random numbers I'm not gonna get too detailed with that it's not I, I, I it's probably really easy for you guys this, this is I mean if you've watched my object-oriented programming already, uh, this this is easy. It's, but that's all I really want to show you with that because we're not going to really work with random numbers until way in the future. So don't worry about that. So the last thing I want to sh uh, talk to you about and the more important thing because it's going to play a role in object-oriented programming in the next video are static variables. So I would actually like to quick make a quick function here. So I'm going to call it what do I want to... I actually forgot what I was going to do with it. Uh, I'll just create a regular void. Void and... I don't know. Void print num. Um, I'm not going to make any comments. I'm just going to do this. Void print num. And basically inside of this function, let's create an integer. Let's call it x. So I'm being very vague here, but oh well and I'll set it equal to zero. I'll do something like that then I'll go see out see out x plus equals five. So how do you think that'll work? So do you think it will print out five? So let's go up here and actually call that function print num. So it's a very basic function that does pretty much nothing but oh well. Oh, I should have done an end line. But there it is. There's the 5. Uh, but now, the next thing I'd like to actually show you, first let me make an end line here, is what if we actually call this function again? Have you thought about this before? Um, we've, we've learned that we can't create two of the same variables, right? If I go int x here, what happens? I go x equals 0. Do you think we're going to get an error with this? Um, let me just comment this out, because an error is not coming up like I thought thought it would. So let me run this. Oh, now we got the build errors. So, oh, there we go. Redefinition multiple initialization with x. So as you can see, we can't have more than one x in memory, at least with integers. So if we call this function more than once, and what do you think will happen? Do you think we're going to actually create two x's? Well, let's see what happens. Let's see if this works. No, we actually printed two fives. Now, why is that? Well, when you leave a function, all the variables that you created, that you uh, declared inside of that function, were actually destroyed. Now, if you remember in object-oriented programming, one of the default functions that we had to make was called the destructor. Do you remember this? Basically, what, the, what I was trying to explain what the destructor does is once an object that's created inside a function leaves that function, it that destructor is activated and that object will then be destroyed. Well, the same thing happens here. Uh, this int was destroyed once we left this function so that when we went back in here, we could recreate it. And that's also why when we use the x plus equals 5, it stayed at 5. It went back to 0. Of course, then again, we did reinitialize it, but oh well. But what if you want to actually keep a variable? Uh, keep its value so that you can keep calling a function so its value can continuously change. Well, what you could do is create uh, a static variable. So if you create a static variable, you'll actually be able to save its value. Now, of course, this won't work, excuse me, 
because we'll keep initializing it back to zero. So typically, you won't create your uh, static variables down there. Instead, you'll actually make them global variables. Now, I know I told you global variables are variables that you should never make, but they're different. You don't. Uh, I you treat global variables different than static variables. Uh, so remember, global variables are usually a bad thing. But up here, you can still declare constants, and I would recommend your static variables up here as well. So I'm going to create static int x is equal to 0. So then down here, we're going to do the x plus equals 5. So let's see how this works. So we have our int x up here. It's a global static variable. And let's see how this works. There we go. Now it's at 5. So basically, uh, when we first ran this to begin with, this x was created in memory. And it was set equal to 0. So then we, when we went into our print num, it incremented up by 5. But then when we left the function, we didn't have to worry about it being destroyed. But, uh, but then when we go into this print num, the second one, it goes back up again. Now you might be thinking, well, couldn't I just make a regular int up here and do this? Well, you could, but that's really not what you typically do. And the more significant purpose of static variables will be explained thoroughly in the next tutorial when we discuss you know, how you use them in the classes. Because that's typically where you'll use them. You won't typically use them here. Uh, because here, uh, you can't really make static variables inside of these kind of functions because you have to keep reinitializing them like I had equals to zero. So making them in here and like this is typically not something you would ever do, but I just wanted to show you that it works. Uh, but yeah, in the next tutorial, we're going to learn about static member variables and how they can be very useful in determining uh, and holding information in memory so that you can't lose it. So that will be very helpful. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Uh, it wasn't really much, uh, but I'll see you next time when it counts.